So box two is called positional encoding. Uh, why is positional encoding important? What is it? Let's look at this example. Um, horses eat apples, right? It's a valid, grammatically valid English sentence. It makes total sense, means something. Um, now let's take the same words and rearrange them. Apples eat horses. It's a grammatically correct English sentence. It's, um, every, it follows all the rules. It has exactly the same words, but it means something completely different, right? And in fact, it's nonsensical. Apples don't eat horses. So that just illustrates that you, word you order. Just, you just haven't done enough LSD. Uh, it's, uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah. In some some weird dreams, uh, ca maybe. Carry on, carry on, carry on. <laughs> uh, yes, or for some people it might make a lot of sense. <laughs> Anyways, but the point is that um, word order in a language is important and it can significantly affect meaning. Um, when we were talking about well, when the the state of the art for language processing were recurrent neural networks and LSTMs. That wasn't a problem because they inherently preserve word order. They take the words in sequentially. Whereas transformers have a major breakthrough in the sense that they take the input in parallel, so they're much faster. But at the same time, that creates the disadvantage that they don't inherently preserve word order. And so, therefore, in order to correctly convey the meaning of a sentence into a transformer model, you have to have positional encoding. Again, this is one of those things that we're not going to dive into. Uh, there's many ways of achieving positional encoding. Uh, the one they use in the Attention's All You Need paper is very elegant. Uh, it uses cosine and sine functions. Uh, it's uh, deterministic for uh, each uh, position in the, in the input sentence. Um, but in a nutshell, what happens is to each one of these vectors that we have for our words, so like we have a word, let's say it has a sentence, it has, or the input, let's say it has 50 words, so it means there's 50 positions. To each one of the vectors that we've created, the embedding vectors, we add a, a small number which represents the position of um, that word in the sentence, right? Or not, so not, it's not, not, not a small number, like a small vector. We add to each one of those vectors, we add another small vector which represents the position of that word in the sentence. And that is a mechanic. So we're just creating the environment for the transformer during training to leverage this, right? So we're our, our job is to encode the positions into these vectors. The transformer will learn how to use that mechanism that we are um, giving, giving to it through this uh, approach. So that's what box number two is, positional encoding.